Good morning class. Today we'll be, we will be discussing the design basics of an English cottage garden. The history behind cottage gardens begins in medieval times. This is when women were gardening and working at home um, where they needed to maximize the space in their small plots of land. This necessitated planting of or intermixing of vegetables, herbs, cut flowers um, within their small garden plots to maximize space and efficiency. In the 1800s, there was a renaissance uh, of sorts in response to the formal architectural styles, um, both architecturally and in landscape design that were prevalent in the late 1700s and early 1800s. Um, additionally, leisure gardens first started popping up in Europe as um, wealth became more common. Um, this allowed for the study of plants, including hardy plants and long blooming plants. And um, with the addition of uh, or the continued um, practice of farm worker cottages. All of these things um, led to a revival or a renaissance of sorts of the English cottage garden. Um, as people had more time and more money and science took a f um, came to the forefront of, uh, of those that were wealthy, um, the English cottage gardens became more than just a survival um, garden and they were used to, like I said, study plants and for leisure purposes, things like cut flower gardens, herb gardens, etc. In modern times, <clears throat> often Cottage gardens are requested of landscape designers because they're thought of as low maintenance. Um, they are applicable in a variety of situations, everything from suburban houses and small cottage bungalows to large manors and uh, um, even commercial um, properties. Additionally, as people find more enjoyment outdoors and learn to appreciate the outdoors uh, in a greater sense, garden rooms are becoming more popular. This is where people can have an extension of the indoors outside um, using things like small herb gardens, mixed vegetable gardens, and cut flower gardens um, as part of their utilitarian um, purpose for their yard. Um, additionally, cottage gardens are finding popularity in small lot landscapes and even in traditional flower beds and borders as seen on the right. Okay, the design elements of a cottage garden. Typically, you won't find many straight lines. Rather, you'll find more informal curved lines, curved pathways, and conceal and reveal, which we talked about before. Um, the use of soft lines where plants are overflowing in the plant and hardscape um, elements are interfingering is also very common. High variety of um, plant material, typically perennials, um, but some roses and topiary trees can be found as well. These high density packed beds um, harken back to that medieval time where space was at a premium. Um, then favorite plants are also used. Um, that stems back to that uh, to the 1800s when science and horticulture were mixed, and people started choosing plants and selecting for plants that had long bloom times, more disease resistance, and better um, smells. Um, typically, we'll find lots of old old-fashioned plants, long blooming scent, and cut flowers. And like I said, annuals, perennials, roses, and dwarf trees are common. Accessories are also an important part. Vertical elements such as arbors and trellises, vertical green walls and bird baths are often found uh, within cottage gardens. Cottage elements, things like picket fences and antiques 
also give the effect, um, contribute to a cottage garden effect. We will study a few um, cottage gardens here. Um, I will leave uh, much of the room um, or, or some time to discuss. Tell me what elements you see in these landscapes that are reflective of cottage gardens. Here we have Hitcode Manor. Um, before I give away any of the design elements, please spend some time and let's talk about what you see. Stonehouse Cottage Garden and Nursery is up next. Okay, in review, what are the values of cottage gardens? Small lots for the plant lover and all of us. Nostalgia. Are there misconceptions when it comes to planting a cottage garden? Are they really low maintenance? Do they really have year-round interest? Okay, let's apply it here to the Inner Mountain West and specifically where we live here in Boise. What might be some of the challenges for a cottage garden in Boise today? Plant choices, traditional tendencies, water and climate. While there are certainly some challenges, what might be some of the advantages for cottage gardening in Boise? High-end, small space uh, residences, low water design, and the abundance of native and drought tolerant plants that also fit the aesthetic of a cottage garden. In your opinion, is a cottage garden justified in Boise?